Good evening, good evening, and very good evening. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Biography. Uh, today's topic is. But before I start talking about today, what I'm going to talk about, um, I have to give you guys the perspective about the today's modern day mirrorless or DSLR cameras. Uh, I just want to give you a perspective and then I'm going to talk then you will be able to understand uh, what I mean to say. You have to understand that these cameras regardless of the brand Nikon, Canon, Sony, Pentax, Fujifilm, Hasselblad, whatever, whatever. These camera companies, these tiny little cameras, especially mirrorless, they have, they are not supercomputers, first of all, they are not supercomputers. So it means that they are basically very much depending on the processing power of whatever the processor are built in. And those processors are not multi-core processor like Threadwrapper from AMD or 12th generation Intel i9 or M2 from um, M2 Max from uh, Apple. They are, not, they are not like that. They are just simple processor who got tons of processing to do in those tiny little machines. And you, you have to understand that the more the processing, the, any processor has to do, it requires more power. So it means that more data those processor has to work upon or has to process, it means more power they need. And these cameras are not powered by like V8 engine or V6 engine, not by any nuclear reactor. These, these cameras are powered by tiny little batteries. All right. And especially in the mirrorless, these batteries are very small, very small. So, okay, I, I can relate that or and I hope you can understand that cameras like the high-end DSLRs like Canon 1DX or D5 or D6 or D3, D3S, D4, D4S, Canon 1DX whole series, Mark 1, Mark 2, Mark 3, all these cameras comes with the big chunky battery, not like the small ones, which were uh, in like D700, D780, D850 not like that so more power means more more battery power means those camera can perform way better and that's why those camera high ISO performance especially high ISO performance were great because at high ISO the camera processor has to do a lot of things okay to process the raw file so to suppress the noise so you can get a cleaner file for every single image and imagine if you are shooting at 14 frames per second then it means that the camera processor has to do the cleaning job the noise cleaning job 14 times a second besides taking the raw files cleaning it uh, processing it as per your color profile and then do a bunch of other tasks Okay, and then make the JPEG out from the raw file and dump into the memory card 14 times a second. Okay, now you can see how much data that this camera has to do, not to mention the autofocus system. And especially if it's high autofocus, then the camera has to do double the duty, not only to take care of the high autofocus, but also to process and everything what you are doing 14 frames per second as 40 frames per second i'm just a, as an example now imagine in the mirrorless camera you are doing the same 30 times a second there's more than double than 14 times a second which was in dslr in mirrorless camera you are doing 30 times up to 30 times a second now this is where the main topic started the main topic is all these high-end cameras, Sony A1, Canon R5, and Nikon Z9, all these three cameras, they are more or less the same, literally the same, even in terms of specs, and I'm going to prove it to you. Now you understand that limitation of the camera processor, 
the data that each processor has to perform how many times a second besides not only the log the autofocus but also taking the frames per second and all these things so the camera processor has to do a lot a lot of computational thing computational task for you guys it's very easy to say well the eye autofocus is not working but you don't understand the how the eye autofocus works you really guys have no idea Nikon Z9 or and uh, and uh, <coughs> the even R5 and even uh, uh, Sony A1 these camera are performing 120 autofocus calculation and auto exposure calculations per second for you guys and then they have to process those 50 megapixels those 45 megapixel image up to 30 times in a uh, in a second now this is where the I, I I want to clear the picture now you understand what I mean to say now here is the thing the, uh, by the way there is one more thing I like to mention these camera companies not marketing the true specs of the machine yeah I'm telling you for example uh, uh, Sony A1 it was marketed at 50 megapixel with 30 frames per second 3.0 which was very impressive I was stunned that how come 50 megapixel because I, I immediately start calculation that 50 megapixel is too much and 30 times like uh, Nikon D850 was like 45 megapixel 9 frames per second and buffer was nearly f not uh, not even 50 uh, frames the buffer and these mirrorless camera are like 50 megapixel and three more three times the D850 which is 30 frames per second and buffer was nearly 100 so it was impressive but then I you know I love to study things and uh, try to capture how the things works in the in all these cameras and that's where I dig into that a Sony A1 specs and then I come to know you have to check you have to do not one not two not three not four up to five things you have to check before you start getting 30 frames per second if you don't get those five steps you won't get 30 frames per second in Sony A1 what are those five things here it is yes you have to go through all these five steps one by one in order to achieve 50 megapixel images at 30 frames per second if you don't able to achieve uh, not able to do any of these five uh, steps then you will not get 30 frames per second you will get 20 frames per second even if you switch to front current electronic shutter speed front curtain electronic shutter if even if you switch the Sony A1 cannot do 30 frames per second it will switch to 20 frames per second in mechanical Sony A1 only do 10 frames per second yep only 10 in mechanical and in normal mode <coughs> it, it uh, excuse me in normal high speed burst it only do 20 frames per second but in order to achieve 30 frames you have to do these one, two, three, four, five steps. Canon R5 maximum burst rate 20 frames per second. Again, 45 megapixels. 45 megapixel at 20 electronic shutter per second. Electronic. Same goes for I just mentioned uh, Sony A1 20 frames per second electronic shutter. R3 and R5. Canon R305 both mechanical 12 frames per second and electronic the R5 can go 20 frames per second and but R3 can go up to 30 frames per second all right 30 frames per second why it can go 10 extra frames because the megapixel was less it's 24 megapixel in R3 in compared to 4 
45 megapixel in R5. So huge difference. It means that R5 45 megapixel 20 frames per second too much load. R3 24 megapixel less load so it can do 30 frames per second. Now we comes to Z9. Z9 can do 20 frames per second. Uh, but you somehow say well no it can do 30 frames per second. Z9. Well actually actually uh, Z9 can do 120 frames per second which none of these other three cameras A1, R5 or R3 can do. None of them can do 120 frames per second. I'm not here to give you the upper hand of Z9. I'm just trying to give you a clear picture. Like under normal scenario and what are the normal scenario? When the normal scenario is I want uncompressed RAW. I want uncompressed RAW with maximum frames per second. Can I get 30 frames per second in Sony A1? No. You can't get uncompressed RAW in Sony A1 at 30 frames per second. 50 megapixel. You have to switch to compressed RAW. Even lossless compressed, if you are going to select it, you won't get 30 frames per second. You will get only 20 frames per second. Condition provided, you have to select uh, a special list of uh, G, uh, G Master glasses which provides high speed autofocus transition. So it will give you 30 frames per second. So it means that you are limited by so many number of factors, not only those five, but also the list of lenses which are compatible with the, well, lens compatibility sounds logical because obviously the motors are fine tuned with the camera overall autofocus system. So it makes sense. But five extra steps just to reach 10 extra frames from 20 to 30 at 50 megapixel. It uh, sounds like too much work for me. Anyways, Canon R5, you can go uncompressed RAW 20 frames per second. Uncompressed RAW in Sony A1 20 frames per second. Canon R5 20 frames per second. Nikon Z9 20 frames per second. Uncompressed RAW. There is no uncompressed option unfortunately in Nikon Z9. There is a compressed, lossless compress and high efficiency. Uh, sorry, lossless compress, high efficiency compress, high, uh, high efficiency star. Only three options. So, by, there is no uncompressed raw option in Z9. So, by default, the raw file is compressed. So, so you will get 20 frames per second. So, 20 frames per second. 20 frames per second, 20 frames per second in Z9, 20 frames per second in R5, 20 frames per second in Sony A1. These are all the same. The in, in order to achieve an on the neutral ground, on the neutral ground, without any given condition. So there, if there is no condition applied, they are all, all of them doing 20 frames per second raw. That's the bottom line. Only Canon R3 can do 30 frames per second uncompressed RAW. But again, there is a condition because it's only 24 megapixel. So it means that the R3 has to do less processing. Why? Because the megapixel were less. Megapixel are less. Not 50, not 45, it's 24. It means that less data, the processor, the digit, whatever the digit X or whatever the digit processor is, has to perform. There is less load on it. So that's why it can perform more calculations per second. So instead of 20, R3 can do 30 frames per second and compress from. Besides, they are all the same. All are the same. So I don't see any logic behind, you know, one brand is superior, another one is not superior. I was checking. Uh, the Sony A1 performance, no doubt Sony put everything in it, but even if it's burning an eye out of focus for the birds, it's not that great, unlike the R5 or Z9. 
It's not that right. they are still missing the focus. There was a uh, there is too many videos. Too many videos on YouTube is there. It's not good for building. It's not that efficient as efficient. I'm talking about Sony A1. It's not that efficient as Canon R5 or Nikon Z9. I use Nikon Z9 extensively into the field for building. Once it locked the focus, alas, gone. It, it won't get out from it. The stickiness of the bird IF it's so snappy. Like it's not missing the focus. Like in Sony A1, I was watching the video from Sony Ambassador. Even he's saying that, and he was showing the live feed from the EVF. It was missing the focus. Sony A1, you're paying $6,500. For that machine and that machine is like 60 percent 70 percent perform even uh, Tony Northup said the same thing it's not as good like R5 at that time the Z9 was not launched so Z9 was out of the picture but now if you put Z9 R5 and A1 into the same scenario R5 and Z9 will get upper hand over A1. I'm not here to bash about A A1. I'm just giving you the facts that when any company launch the product, all right, they openly say that this product can do up to this. All right, when uh, Z9 launched, it can. It was openly said even at their website. It is there in the Nikon website that Z9 can do 120 frames per second but with 11 megapixel limit, 11.5 megapixel. What, what's happening? How Nikon achieve that? It's very simple. Nikon is capturing, what, what, what is video? Video is just basically, basically still images taken 30 times in a second and we stitch them together to make a video of one second if the video is 30 frames per second this is exactly what happened in Z9 4k is basically drive from 12 megapixel if you have 12 megapixel sensor you can record 12 4k video out from the 12 megapixel so what exactly happening is in Z9 the Nikon Z9 was basically capturing a 4k video 120 frames per second but instead of stitching it together, it directly process all those 120 frames and dump into the memory card without stitching. So you will get 120 JPEGs, not raw, JPEGs, because video is like this. And it, you will get JPEG of 11.5 megapixel, not 12 megapixel, 11 for nearly 12 megapixel. So that's how Nikon achieve. It's basically a 4K video at captured at 120 frames per second, but it's not stitched. And even if you record any 4K video, normal scenario, it's compressed, right? It's not uh, ProRes RAW. What happened was in uh, with the new Nikon firmware update, they introduced ProRes. So, but the file size is so huge so huge i was having 128 gb xqd card 8k 60p raw footage in 128 xqd card the camera was showing me 2 minutes 40 seconds can you believe it 8k 60p progress raw footage in 128 gb xqd card 2 minutes 40 seconds and when I change the codec to compressed raw as to H.265 something, it was showing me 32, 32 minutes, 34 minutes. Same, same 128 GB XQD card. See, so even in video, there is compressed raw, uncompressed raw, compressed raw is just like JPEG, uncompressed raw, uncompressed video footage, like raw ProRes is like raw file. But 120 frames in Z9 is not raw, it's, those are JPEGs.
that's how they achieve I'm pretty sure Sony A1 once you get A1 Mark II you will get 120 frames per second maybe 240 frames per second you never know but I'm pretty sure it will introduce same will introduce uh, actually there's already been introduced in Canon R5 R3 for where operate there's a uh, 190 frames per second something raw files in the burst of 45 or 50 frames in the burst so there is a condition you have to switch into the configuration and then after the latest firmware update of Canon R3 you can get 191 or 97 I don't know frames per second raw files in the burst of 50 frames or 45 frames each I'm forgetting the numbers but it was a bus so it means that it will take three attempts to capture 197 so what's the point I, I really don't able to understand if you want to achieve 190 plus frames per second it means that a camera will attempt into three steps not in one step I don't know it's really strange three step or four step it's not even in one step so again that shows the limitation of this machine these machines are not super computer they are having a limited power they are having a limited processor and on top of that they have to do all these calculations per second I made a chart about A1, R5, R3, R3 A1, R3 and Z9 I'm going to put that chart on the screen right now and I need you guys to look into that and see and I just I didn't do anything I just grabbed the spec sheets all right of all these three cameras and whatever the spec sheets are there what is mentioned into those spec sheets from their official website I just took those and I just put into the Excel file and here is that Excel sheet whatever is marked in green it means that that brand is having upper hand on other if it's orange, it means that they are performing equal. You can pause the screen and you can look more deeply into all these cameras. And then you can decide which camera is better overall. Thank you for watching this video. And I hope to see you guys in future with some new content. Till then, take care.